Strávím Welcome. Сан байцгаан нөхөн төсөгчтэй. Өнөөдөр манай де факто нэг төрөлгийн зочноор Лондон хотод Сант Петерс Итон Сквер буюу Итон Сквер дээр Арун Петрин багш сургуулийн захирал Миссис Котие оролцож байна. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, that's uh, you. Uh, your school is uh, so historic. How old is that now? Well, originally the school started here in about 1870. So we've been on this site for a long time. Quite some time, 140. Yes. Or 40 years. And from the beginning, this school was here. What happened was that the school started and then moved into this as a sort of purpose-built mm -hmm. uh, school because uh -huh. it was a real push for education mm -hmm. and so we've been here for a long time and historically how come that uh, uh, please tell us first about the in general about the education system and and the primary education system inside yes because we're a state school and primary education starts from five uh, there is you can have nursery education before that but you don't have to go to nursery but then from five you need to be in school and a primary school goes up to 11 then children leave and go on to a secondary school which will take them all the way through to their sort of final exams and their a levels and on to university and that will be the early school primary school, secondary school, and tertiary school. In that's school. right, that's right. And you are dealing with the from five to 11 years old. That's right. This, this system is true all around the country. Yeah, it, there, are, there are variations because we also have an independent sector okay. as well. And, but pretty much uh -huh. uh, it is expected that children are to be in education from five. Um, obviously they can have preschool experience, but then ideally if they want to go on to university, they really need to be in school all the way till 18. From five to 11, it's a, such a, an important period in life of uh, children. Right, it's grown up, just becoming a personality. In the education system in many countries all around, they give a knowledge about a particular subject, the sequences of things there, and now plus you pay certain attention to being, forming that young child into personality. What makes uh, your school different? Well. I think that all that you have said we take on board but what we're a church school which means for us our faith is important but we are also very keen to look holistically at the whole child because our mission which is to help children realize their potential for us that's the potential God has given to all humans and we want them to be the best they can be now in order to do that we've got to look at the whole child we've got to look at the academics we've got to look at the social and emotional yes. we've got to look at the spiritual yes. we've got to look at the physical development yes. we've got to look at all of that together yes. because we have these wonderful little people come yep. to us so we've got to develop difference the kids yes. and then uh, how many students are all together at the Do moment students or people I tend to call them pupils uh -huh. yeah um, and what tends to happen is that we have about 390 Mm -hmm. uh, and it's there's a lovely feel because that's not too many so children know each other and the staff know the children mm -hmm. and the parents know the staff and there's a great uh, sort of it feeling of involvement everyone together mm -hmm. because we can't do it on our own we need our parents on board we need our governors on board we all have to be working with the same goals how many teachers would be for this uh, about 400 
Well, what it we have is we have about one class teacher to every 25 to 30 children. Okay. That's that's the sort of sort of their main teacher. And then we will have some extra um, staff. Obviously, there's myself, I'm the head, and I have a deputy. Mm -hmm. And then I also have an inclusion manager mm -hmm. who looks after um, children with particular needs mm -hmm. or particular gifts and talents and, and can, uh, wow. really helps them to develop as well. You said that particular gifts and talents, yes. you find out among these 400 children that kids with a particular talent? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, today some of my really keen mathematicians mm -hmm. are going off this afternoon for a specific mm -hmm. um, session uh, off-site to really help them explore and develop that skill. Or sometimes in sport my children might go somewhere. Or if it is a particular talent they have in um, perhaps art, we will look at what we can offer them to help them develop because we feel that it's vital to enrich our children's lives. And this is all the children. And if you don't give them the experiences, you won't help them to find where is their talent and what do they want to do. Yes. So we try as well as the curriculum, which of course we need to be sure that our children are going to be numerate and literate, and therefore they're going to get high standards in their English and their maths, but as well as that, it's a much bigger picture. It's giving them confidence and self-esteem, and it's really exposing them to everything that's out there. Yet, uh, it looks like it's like more customer tailored if in the business world, yes. but yet you have to follow certain standard that requires from school all around the country in this. Absolutely. In this but what we have to do, we have to make sure that at the end we get the required results, okay. which we do. But we are very successful at doing that because we feel that we do it through making sure we have enriched their lives and given them opportunities and have very high standards, support them to get there. And this is it. So because we are very successful, we make sure that we get to the end result. But the path through which we do it, we feel mm -hmm. we are really well placed to in because we haven't got thousands of children. So we're very well placed to look at their individual talents yes. and support. Them. And this uh, your students, pupils will go to the secondary school afterwards. Yes. And how do you measure your success? Right. At uh, at 11, at, for in year six, children nationally across the country uh, take uh, particular tests mm. and this is a national test and therefore you get, they get a particular level mm. and schools, our primary schools are measured mm. on that level and on how much progress the children have made mm. from when they were seven, when there is also national testing, to when they are 11. Mm. And these are ways that all children are measured. And of course, therefore, we pay attention to this mm -hmm. and we are, know that our children make fantastic progress mm -hmm. and come out with very high levels. Mm -hmm. And this means they are so well prepared for the next stage mm -hmm. because learning is a journey. And we are at the very exciting start of that journey. Yes. Yeah. And we don't quite know the path that the children uh -huh. are going to want to reach at the yeah. end, but we absolutely know yeah. what they need to have with them on that journey. Uh, based on that, uh, compared with other similar school, uh, if there is certain measurement, maybe by success in the secondary or mm -hmm. by very famous graduates of the school, do you have particular measurement in that sense? Well, what we actually do is we are very thrilled that our children go to a whole range of secondary schools. There's not yes. just one school they yes. go on to, and they go on, and then they do outstandingly well. And rather than individuals who would say, oh, that is so-and-so, and we're very proud of them, we are proud that our children go on to be the best that they can. Mm -hmm. And they go on from us, they go on and do very, very successfully in their secondary schools, we get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. from the secondary schools. We also know that then they go on and are very successful in life. Mm -hmm. And some of them then choose for their children to come back here. So that's wow. rather lovely that's too. The case. Yes. Many times. Yeah. So that's rather nice. That that's that 
a sort of family connection. Um, you know, we will have families who are um, not at all wealthy, who may be um, homeless in temporary housing, and we will have families at the other end who are very affluent. But we are a church school because in England, mm -hmm. the Church of England is our, our yes. sort of national state religion, okay. in a sense. And therefore, as a church school, the first criteria really is for children whose families are church families. Yes. And we are very closely linked with our church, St. Peter's Eaton Square, just uh, you know, really around the corner from us. And we have very close links there. So in our admissions criteria, that is important. To, uh, the faith is important to us. And their parents to be uh, members of those churches? Yes, their parents to attend the churches regularly. This particular church? For this church, but then other Christian churches. Okay. And that is because we're a church school, and we're very open about that. We say, this is what we are. Okay. We're a church school. Our, our faith and our ethos is based on that. Is it, uh, is it recommendation by another member of the church required to be a member or to send your yeah. kids to yeah. the school? What can happen? Families have complete choice about where and if they yes. worship. Mm -hmm. And then if they are worshipping regularly, mm -hmm. either at St. Peter's Church or at another church, then their um, religious leader mm -hmm. will be able to write a recommendation and then that will be part of, uh, will meet the criteria that we have for, for mm -hmm. admissions. So our children don't all come just from the immediate neighbourhood. Mm -hmm. Some of them may worship at our church, but may live um, further away. Mm -hmm. Well, uh for our audience, I would like to know a little bit more because I understand in your society, in the Western society, you give equal uh, attention to the personality, the form, formation of that person, young person, and the knowledge you give them. If you compare this with certain scale from zero to 10, which level you will give you to the knowledge and the formation of the character? Now that is so interesting because we see it as integrated. We have to have both aspects developed for the child to realize their potential. Now that's what we want them to do. And in order to do that, we, we have to be, have this holistic view and take the two together. We can't, we don't just want to turn out children who just, you know, uh, can do academic work but maybe don't have sympathy yeah. or empathy yes. or friendship or all yeah. the other values that we think are so important for them, we need to have that side as well. Because in that way, we are trying to turn out the, and support the whole person. And so we make sure that in our teaching, those are both kept in mind as we plan yeah. and develop the curriculum for our children. And how, how do you do that, for example? particular this you said wholeness the per, the personality shape in yes. which way you do it How well do when for example when they first start with us when they're in what we call our early years uh -huh. what we're really focusing on right from the start is really to do with their social skills is do they know how to share do they know how to take turns? Yes. Do they know how to listen to each other? Do they know how to help each other? Do they know how to work together? All those things are built in right from the start. In fact, that's a prime focus. It's a separate subject or it goes... It's in whatever they are doing. It's whatever they are doing and we are developing, we're looking at their social development, their emotional development, we are really supporting that and that is a basis because if they don't have that, then they're not going to go on to be successful. So great emphasis is put on that in the early years of all and and you know obviously repeated and repeated yes. and in different yes. ways Shaming and constantly. absolutely because then when they are now ready to learn they are feeling confident they know how everything works they know how to relate one to another they know it's not all me 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 yes. it's actually you know how awesome. we are going to work as a whole team as a whole class then they're in an absolute perfect state to absorb learning. By the end of the education at this primary school, yes. a kid would be able minimum to express 
confidently themselves, whatever in, in whatever setting, whatever emotions they may have, do they have a do you have a particular a checking point when they leave the school? How really are their wholeness is made? Well, actually, what we do is, in fact, three times a year. I meet with my teachers uh, to go through every child in their class and I'm there, their, um, my, my deputy, my, the leader of that particular um, area of the school and, and my inclusion manager the, who looks at you know, particular needs and talents. And we go through, as a team, we go through every single child three times a year because we're looking at how they're developing academically, we're looking at how they're doing in maths, we're looking at how they're doing in English, but also how are they developing as young people. You talk to that young person. Absolutely. No, at this point I do it with the teachers. The teachers then set targets for the children and they talk to the children and they set targets with them so that they're looking at their social and emotional learning, their literacy and their numeracy and they share this with the parents so that everybody knows where we're going and what we're trying to do next so we know the next steps. What you're saying is you go, I mean actually with every child three times a year through their teacher, yeah. how that child is doing yeah. well or not, right? Yes. Wow, this is quite it, hard work. It is, but that's because we are passionate about having the best for our children. What makes you to be passionate so much? Well, I think because I've, I've always been a teacher. Uh -huh. And therefore, for me, this has been a great joy since yeah. university to go into teaching. Mm -hmm. I've been very, very lucky because I have taught in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So I have seen um, different cultures, different places, different systems. And then been able to come back mm -hmm. and develop my career and be a head teacher. Mm -hmm. And it is about the fact that children, young children, mm -hmm. This is the time where you can make a huge difference. You can influence their whole lives, exactly. their whole path. And so you've got to do all you can you to get it right. Ms. Gautier, you have been working, you said, all around the world in other cultures. Yes. Please tell us about, very, uh, about your career. What does it take to be a teacher of such a prestigious school? And what was your education, where you came from? Well, uh, I think I have been myself very lucky and very blessed because I had a very supportive family and that's marvellous. So uh, when I was young, I went uh, for a year on an exchange to America, which my family you know, encouraged and supported me to do. And this was my first time of living abroad when I was 16 uh, and I saw their American system there. I was in Boston, just outside Boston. And then I came back um, to England and went on and did my training to be a teacher. Uh, I taught in England to begin with and then I went and taught in the Bahamas, which was uh, a fascinating experience. Then I moved to America and worked there and in Canada. And all of this enabled me to get a really wide view of different ways of doing things and the fact that there doesn't just have to be one way and only one way. Because everywhere that I went there were fantastic things for me to pick up. And then I came back and I worked um, in Wales where my family were and then down in London. And in London I felt that this was a fantastic place to work because it is so cosmopolitan. Yeah. We have children from all over the world. But also there was a real need for fantastic education. And I was fortunate enough to become uh, the head of another church school, St. Matthew's in Westminster. Uh -huh. and I was there for 14 years, uh -huh. and then I came here uh, to St. Peter's uh -huh. because I'm really passionate about great education. And for me, um, this means in a church school, that's my choice, that's what I want to do, and it's where I feel that we then can make a huge difference to the lives of children. And your position is, uh, would be, for example, announce it, then you have come and compete with, or it is, what does it work? How you select yes. the director of such a school? Yes, uh, yes, there is, there is quite a process to follow. Um, there is, uh, uh, the positions would be advertised nationally, uh -huh. and then uh, you 
obviously have to look at the, all the criteria yeah. and see if you, yeah. you meet it. And then you were invited to apply. Yeah. Um, first of all, I had come to, to see the school and I had um, and I knew the school, mm -hmm. I knew its reputation. Mm -hmm. And then I was interviewed mm -hmm. and then from that uh, appointed. And then it is the school is run certain trustee. How does the uh, uh, management work? Yes, we have we have a board of governors, yes. and because we're a church school, we're very closely associated with um, the London Diocesan Board for Schools because mm. we are a, a church school. Mm. And in our governing body, the majority of the governors are actually what are called foundation governors. That means they have some sort of um, a, a faith link, mm. and this for us is important because. Mm. For us, as, a Chris, as Christians, mm -hmm. this is governing our ethos of why mm -hmm. we want the best mm -hmm. for our children. And therefore, everything that is done in the school is under, is under that umbrella and fits in with that ethos. And will that board have uh, somebody from parents? Yes, it will have uh, parents, it will have church members. We're very fortunate in that our governing body looks at what are the needs of the school, so we'll have people with financial expertise, with legal expertise, and all of this together, uh, the governors then will um, work strategically to support the school. And uh, having said that, is the school having any fund from the government? Yes, we are, a, we are a state school. Uh -huh. Which means? Which means that our funding comes centrally from the government. Okay. Our parents don't have to pay for their children to come here. Hmm. It is state funded. Mm -hmm. Because we are a church school, it means that in terms of um, our buildings mm -hmm. are sort of more owned by the church True. and we have very close links with our diocesan board um, who help to support us who support um, teacher development and training and helping us to keep abreast so of developments a from the government those yes. money will go for teachers expenses or you get the money and pay rent to the church what happens is the money comes into the school and then from the school we then pay, we pay everything. We pay it through, through our local authority. They sort of hold the money uh -huh. and then we obviously set our budget uh -huh. uh, for, I mean staffing is yes. always the biggest part sure. of the budget, but, but for running the building and everything rent else that we need to do. Yeah, we church. don't know, we don't pay rent to the church, we just, this, um, this is for educational purposes, this building is to be used for educational so, purposes. Uh, that means when you get a budget from the state, it should be uh, based per, uh, per 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 amount. That's it. It's based on the number of the pupils, the number okay. of pupils, and then any. Sometimes you get extra funding for particular needs yes. um, or deprivation for so the pupils. Compared with the schools, who has to pay rent, for example you are a little bit in a better position to spend more for teachers? Well, really, it doesn't quite work like that in that for all state schools, you don't actually have to pay rent for the buildings. They are provided. I, but on the independent sector, it's rather different, and that's why families have to, have to pay um, for that. So uh, my question is coming to uh, the point where, of course, w we are human, different. Yeah? Somebody is performing good, somebody performing less. Mm -hmm. When they are getting paid, mm -hmm. do you have as a principal, the director of the school, uh, in a position to make a decisions to pay based on performance? Well, this is something that, interestingly, the government are now looking at introducing. But what we have is for every member of staff, we have performance management. Now, that means that every year, um, we have targets that are set for the teachers uh, and we also look at the development of the teachers, what they may need in terms of training and support and then this is reviewed to make sure that really everything is going on as well as possible. Now for us, because we are absolutely passionate mm -hmm. that we want the best for our children, I've got to have outstanding teaching. Yes. So you have to attract so, the best talent. Um, absolutely. So, you know, we've got to be really clear about what outstanding teaching looks like, what it is, how we do it, how therefore this best helps and supports the children. And therefore that uh, I'm very clear with all my staff that we all have to share that vision. We can't think it's okay just to be mediocre. 
No. So that means that teachers love their work, they have a passion about that. How long usually teachers stay in if there's any turnover of well, it is it is interesting because I have some teachers who will have been here literally over 25 years uh -huh. and then I will have others who are just here for a couple of years. Mm. But this is also because teachers for their own development mm. will perhaps want to be here, get all, you know, sure. get and give yes. while they're here and then look at moving on so that they can perhaps go on to positions of responsibility mm -hmm. in other schools. And that is quite common, particularly in central London, mm -hmm. where, to be honest, housing yeah. and uh, cost of living comes into play. And so for some of my uh, lovely young teachers, yes. after a few years, yes. they may want to move out of, out of London, but yes. they will take all that they've learnt yes. and they will go on to other senior positions. Yeah, that's my point. Uh, just uh, since you, Ms. Kote, you have been working abroad in different countries, different culture. For example, Japan, where primary schools teachers have in this hierarchy has more honor, reputation, even paying better, be being paid better than other professions somehow, mm -hmm. because this importance of that particular time for the childhood mm -hmm. growth, and they paid well. If you compare with that teacher, here and the being in the center of financial world mm -hmm. uh, in London, in the, in the so close in the center, do you compare the teacher work compared with the bank investment bank? And it would, it would, you know what I mean. Absolutely, <laughs> and financially, uh, you'd be better off being a yes. banker. But is that all there is? Uh -huh. Because it is about what, what is your passion? What do you want to do? What do I want to do with my life? Right. What what gives me great joy is yes. seeing my children succeed. Yes. And so I wouldn't mind earning what a banker earns, but <laughs> it's not how things are. And I think you don't go into teaching for financial reasons, yes. but you, if you're going to be an outstanding teacher, you go in for the passion of what you do. And that brings other rewards. Okay, my, uh, now we're coming close to the end of the interview, mm -hmm. but since, because this time, evolving here and happen events happened this week uh, remember the there was a time when uh, margaret Thatcher has cut to delivery of milk yes uh, to a school child which was given every day yes. and yes. he she got a nickname right the yes. Thatcher. The yes snatcher, there's milk, milk, milk snatcher milk. yes what was your take at that time and now uh well i i think that Whenever political decisions are made, they are going to impact uh, in schools. I think education and politics, they have to be interlinked because education is so important. And I feel that sometimes I might not agree with all political decisions about education, but what I do really agree with is that education has to be right there on the political agenda because it's so important. And so, whichever party is in power, and whatever the policies are, I want somebody overseeing education who is passionate about what is best for children. And also, I hope, who will listen to educational leaders mm. and take on board what educational leaders have to say. Why you have been working at that time? Well, I think... I don't think I was w working back at that time, certainly over, over here, but I do remember that that was uh, a name that Margaret Thatcher had. In fact, I think uh, I was, uh, I think I was, I was still a student, but I remember when I was in America um, that it was just when Margaret Thatcher was becoming the, the leader of the, of the Conservative Party. And I remember being asked at that time, um, oh, you know, who is, this, who is this woman? Who is this lady who is, who is becoming a, a, a political leader? And as a student then, the important thing I felt mm -hmm. was that men and women were both able to, to rise to the top. And therefore, this was even before she was Prime Minister, that it was important to see a woman who, just as a man, could be a leader, because I think that that's very important to value men and women and value all our differences and know that everyone has potential 
and the important thing is to realize it. Yeah, as uh, Ronald Reagan said, she was the best man in England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, uh, how do you see your school five years from now? Well, uh, it's always moving forward. We are never complacent. Uh, it, it is a fabulous school. It, it is an outstanding school, but there's always more we can do. And this is what is so exciting. We are, we are in a building project. We are actually physically changing the building to be even better for the children and, and expanding. But it's also about different experiences, different opportunities. What should we do next? It's getting uh, completely wired, wire fine. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, now we have to be so aware that it isn't gone are the days where children just learn through yes. sort of chalk and yes. talk. And therefore, being aware of all that the internet can offer is tremendously important. Um, you know, there are things to be aware of, to be cautious about, but also there are opportunities. And that's what we've got Everybody, to take. Up. Every uh, child now has iPhone, yeah. uh, Android, etc., and they have uh, access to information of all type. So how you would control that content in this environment? And again, it's not being scared of it. It's thinking, great, fantastic opportunities, but just, just like, I mean, I'm a parent as well. Yes. And just like as a parent, you want your children to do well, but you also need to be there making sure that they are learning in a suitable way. It's the same with all, with all the internet, that you want them to think, gosh, what a fantastic resource, I can find things out. But you have to be prudent and careful and just aware of the, of, of the safety of children. What will happen if the uh, happens, say, a child is uh, using information from somebody yet not quoting? If it seems like a child may do it because they don't know it, mm -hmm. you cannot do it, mm -hmm. etc. What is usually the rule of the school? It's about it's about really what we what we need to teach our children, and therefore we need to teach the children so that they understand what the requirements are what the expectations are, where things could be a little bit tricky, and what to do if there is a problem. Um, if they are looking at a site and suddenly there's something inappropriate, what do they do? They tell us. Mm -hmm. And we, we do have a, um, a very clear guide for our children and our staff, because things move on so quickly that we have to be moving and adapting. And it is that flexibility and adapting in in IT, but also in all areas that keeps everything fresh. That should be, a, it should be something that the children trust your teacher equally, right? It's so much that they, when they have a problem, they tell the teacher. Absolutely. That's what is your Absolutely. Opinion. I think that's very, very important. You know, Ms. Gertrude, what you told us now is, I think, the backbones of the teaching system in this country. Mm -hmm. That's why you have a lot of great Brits who is making not only the country change, but the whole world change it. Yes. You have a great uh, rendezvous and uh, I wish you success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.